Hello everybody, welcome back to the show. Okay, the next thing that I want to work on in the questing stuff for Botania is opening the Elven Gateway. And that requires making these mana pylons. I've already made the other bits, the Glimmering Wood and the Elven Gateway Core, and then Living Wood is the other item you need. But the mana pylons and Looking at the recipe for those, that requires draconium ingots, a block of mana diamonds, and two block of mana steels for each one of these. So I was working on this while I was doing the thermal lily stuff, but at that time I did not have enough draconium nuggets to make four ingots. But now I do. I need 36 of these guys to be able to do this, so let's go ahead and take those out like that and so we'll make these nuggets great and we take these go like this good and now should be able to make two of the mana pylons great All right so that completes that quest manically I get a mana distributor fine that's fine and then this is what's used to spawn the Gaia Guardian. Yes, I'm not gonna do that just yet. But I do want to make the Elven Gateway. So let's get the Lexica Batania. And we're gonna go in here and we're gonna search for the Elven, the Portal to Alpine. There we go. And we can go like this. We can go through this. The recipes were a little bit different, I think. But anyway, we can do a visualize on this. And this allows us to, you can see where, where we want to put it. And I think what I want to do is I want to put it um, somewhere. I think I'm just going to put it like right uh, kind of across from this maybe and put it right uh, right click no how do I what do I do? oh yeah okay I must have right click must have anchored it there um what I'm not seeing is the the pylons at least two natura pylons with mana pools directly below must be laid out in an 11 by 11 area around the core oh it doesn't have to be in a required area anymore Oh, that's different. Used to be that the mana, the, um, what are they called again? The Natura pylons. Well, those are mana pylons. Wait, do I need to make Natura pylons? Um, oh, maybe this is different now. Let me do some research real quick. Okay, well, I guess... I it's been a long time. It's been quite a while since I've used Botania. I don't know if it's changed. I guess I sort of remember it having a fixed place where the mana pools with the pylons on top of them had to be. And for some reason I remember them being mana pylons and not nature of pylons. So either I'm just remembering wrong or things have changed. But it doesn't really matter. Regardless, in order to turn these mana pylons into nature of pylons, I do need two blocks of mana steel each and two blocks of terra steel each. And now this recipe may be more expensive because of this mod pack, I'm not sure about that part. The mana steel of course is very easy, but the terra steel was taking some time and I went ahead and did what I talked about earlier. I made some more uh, terra steel chickens. I've decided to make three extra gold chickens. I'm going to make a total of four extra terra steel chickens. And then I think I am going to make three Man of Steel chickens and then four of the Draconium chickens. But I'm still working on all of that, as you can see. But I waited a while and I finally have gotten four blocks of Terra Steel. So let's take those out and go ahead and make this Natura Pylon. Which, if we put it in the right order, looks like that. Okay. And I think that also qualifies... Oh, I've got to make two more of them? Maybe I have to make four in order to spawn the Gaia Guardian. 
Not entirely sure, but doesn't matter. I'm not working on that just yet. So I think what I was going to do is put these Natura pylon here and here. Now, as I said, I seem to recall the last time I did this in a different mod pack that the the mana pools with the pylons had to be in a specific place. But according to this, it just has to be... It says here that the... Where is it at? The two natural pylons with mana pools must be laid out in an 11 by 11 area around the core. And then, yeah, so this is the core, the Elven Gateway core, and 11 by 11 basically means five out in either direction, so one, two, three, four, five would be out to this block here. So I should be, you know, at the right area for it. Now, I don't know if the amount of mana that's required is changed or not. Uh, this right now is very clunky, and I know that it is essentially... The, I'm going to change this. Once I have the Elven Gateway Core open, I can start making the recessive and dominant sparks. And so I'm going to create a mana battery once I have those. But for now, this is what I'm doing. And just to make sure that the mana gets evenly distributed between these two mana pools. But I'm going to go ahead and try to open up the Elven Gateway. And it is working. Oh, look at that. It used about mm, almost half of a mana pool. Or wait, what was that? One, two, about an eighth of a mana pool each. So about a quarter of a mana pool in total. Now, I don't know if my Thermal Lily generation system here is enough to maintain this in an open state or not. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave it like that for now yeah that's great so let's look at what do I want to do to make a mana battery well in order to do that we need to make the, the sparks and making the sparks themselves is pretty easy blaze powder gold nuggets and any type of flowers will give you a spark but we also want to make the dominant and recessive augments. Now, the dominant ones require runes of fire and pixie dust. Pixie dust you get from throwing a mana pearl into the portal. And the recessive ones require rune of earth and pixie dust. So that should be fairly simple. It's probably just a matter of figuring out how many I want to make. Now, each one of these I want to be recessive. So that's four recessive ones. And then there would be two dominant ones there on these two pools. And then I would have a number of pools in the middle that form, you know, the battery portion of it. So I'm going to go ahead and make the sparks and the augments. And I'll come back when I have that all put together. Okay, I have a bunch of sparks made. So let's go ahead and see how I want to set up this mana battery. Let's go ahead and take out these spreaders here. And I think what I'm going to just do is make a very simple line of mana pools that go like this. Kind of keep things a little bit uh, sort of symmetrical, if you will. I think that's okay. And I want to add a mana pool, say, here. That's going to be a dominant one there. Now we'll put a spark above each one of these mana pools. Like that. And then one on each of these four as well and then one two three and four okay i've got two extra that's fine now we'll take the dominant sparks and the dominant sparks are going to be this one and this is always the problem i don't know if i can actually target that, mm hmm, that is going to be an issue. Yeah. Darn, darn, darn. So I think I have to take the mana pylons out. I think that's the only way to do this. I, if I'm wrong, if there's another way to do it, somebody can let me know. But I think I have to remove those. Okay, now I can make this one a dominant and that one a dominant. Fine. 
And then I want that one to be a dominant. And I want this one over here to be dominant as well. Good. Okay, now, these four here are going to be the recessive. So recessive, 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 and... Oops. How come I didn't get... Um, I have to... Kind of hard to target sometimes. Okay. All right, so these four are recessive, and these two, and this one, and that one is dominant. It's interesting that I took these minor, these Natura pylons out, and the thing is still working. But we're going to put them back, like so. It should still be fine. Okay, and then that's going to form the basis of the mana battery, which I could probably expand out at some point. A future point in time if I want to. Now if you're not sure how these sparks work, these recessive sparks will automatically send mana to any spark that doesn't have anything on it. In other words, these seven here. And then these dominant sparks will take mana from um, a mana pool that has the regular sparks on it. So this, basically what this achieves is that these mana pools will empty into these seven and these seven will empty into these four and when these four are full then these will you know not empty out so then they will fill up and if they become full then these four will then fill up so it works the, I, and I think it's called a mana battery that's what I've always called it and it works usually works pretty good so I'm gonna wait for this to tick over and uh, there it goes so there you can see lots of sparkles going on here, but basically the mana is going into these pools, it is coming out of these pools and into these seven, it's coming out of these seven and going into these four dominant ones. And the reason I have the four dominant ones, these two are obviously for powering the portal to Alfheim. This is the pool over here that I use to do uh, crafting with the runic altar, whether it be... Um, you know, for the different runes and stuff. But then I also use this mana pool to uh, craft various items that are changed when you, you know, put them in a mana pool. And I don't really have a use for this one over here, but I'm going to keep it here sort of a just in case type of a thing uh, as sort of like a backup mana pool. Uh, what I'm primarily thinking of is that this mana pool may be the one that I use to power any mana items that I might carry on my own self, you know. So it uh, using a mana mirror, I think it's called, to uh, access this pool of mana here. But yeah, so that seems to work okay. These mana pools were actually gaining mana, so I think I'm making enough through the thermal lilies for this to stay open. However, this was before I added the two extra mana pools so I'll have to keep an eye on it for now but I think it works out pretty good the way it is but that's gonna do it for this episode if you have any questions or comments please leave them for me down below I do appreciate all of your suggestions and criticisms and anything else that you may have to say and of course as always feel free to just uh, shout out hi if you want to shout out hi as always, I thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time.